Okay, we're going to be looking at reduction formulas, how we apply them um, to solve particular problems like the one in number one. But before I start, I just want to highlight what we already know. We know that if we have a horizontal reduction, so in other words, if we reduce re away from the horizontal line, our reduction formulas are as follows. In the fourth quadrant, it's 360, we bounce back. So 360 minus theta, I made a silly mistake there. In the first quadrant, the horizontal reduction will lead to either an angle theta, which in any case, because of this size being defined here, lies in the first quadrant. Or we can have it as a revolution that bounced off on uh, uh, rather away from or from the horizontal line to land at 360 plus something. In the second quadrant, horizontal reduction was 180. We go to 180, we bounce back. Or horizontal in the third could be 180 plus theta. Okay, so if I now look at my vertical line, so in other words, if I reduce in terms of the 90 and 270 line, okay, my, my reduction formula in the first quadrant will be 90 minus something, in the second 90 plus, because you go to 90, you bounce on. In the third, 270 and we bounce back, and in the fourth, it's 270 and we bounce on. Okay, very important idea here is the idea of the negative angle. Now that is related to the horizontal. If we do a clockwise measurement of the angle, that accounts for the negative, and then the angle is theta. If we measure anti-clockwise, the angle will be positive theta. One more thing to remember, that if you have your complementary ratios here, your co-ratios your sine becomes cosine and cosine becomes sine. The moment you work with a reduction of 90 plus or minus theta or 270 plus or minus theta. It's smudged a bit there. Okay, so let's have a look how we apply this. And sorry, no, before we start that, let's remind ourselves as well that we've learned identities here. Identities, tjo. I'm, my spelling is bad today. Identities, my square identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. And then my tan of theta is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And remember the variations of both of these that we looked at in the previous video. Okay, the last thing before we can start is to remind yourself that we also learned about the cast rule. The cast rule tells us where angles are indeed positive. Okay, so let's start and let's look at how are we going to answer the question that I've got here on the right hand side. Well, there's a few things that we need to follow. We need to find out first of all in which quadrant am I working. Then you determine the sign of the ratio in this quadrant. And then thirdly, you apply your reduction. So that's basically the three basic steps that we're going to follow. After we've applied the reduction, then we could then call on possibly call on identities to help us uh, identities, I'm misspelling everything, identities to call, that we call on to work with that angle. Okay, so let's have a look. In the first, in, in my first ratio given is the sine of 180 plus theta. 180 plus theta is in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, according to the cast diagram, sine is negative. Okay, so this is going to become, now please, big hint, for every single reduction you're going to apply, please put a bracket on your um, sheet that you're answering this on so that you don't fall into simple traps we set for you. So first of all, we said it's the third. In the third, sine is negative. So this becomes minus the sine of the angle that we're working with. 
We're not applying a vertical reduction here because that's 180. So that's in terms of the horizontal. 180 plus theta is in the third. Tan is the only ratio positive, which means sine is negative. So it becomes a minus the sine of theta. Our minus theta angle, let's see where that lies. Minus theta lies over here. It's in the fourth quadrant. It's measured, the negative indicates it's measured clockwise and it's an acute angle. So minus theta, as we indicated here, lies in the fourth. Tan, so this is fourth. Tan is negative. So I have minus the tan of the angle theta. That went quite well. 360 minus theta. If you're scared, you're going to forget where it lies, folks. Just draw it. 360 is positive, so it's anti-clockwise. And then you come back theta. So it lies in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is indeed positive. So this is the cosine of theta. Okay, so this was a, st uh, a deep trigonometric applications here. Three applications of trigonometry. Now look at, now I'm going to do algebra. A minus times a minus is a positive, so the negatives dissolve. I have a sine over a cos here, so this combination by my quotient identity leaves me with a tan of theta that I am multiplying with another tan theta, and my result will be tan squared theta. Okay, so your little um, s sequence of steps here is very important. The questions you ask yourself in your head when you do reduction are hugely important, and you apply them accurately, folks. If you don't want to learn these things off by heart, the horizontal reductions, use your common sense, draw a little diagram to remind yourself. Okay, let's look at the second question. The second question, remember I said, use brackets immediately, so I prepare myself. Bracket, there's one, two, three factors at the top, there's one factor at the bottom. So let's analyze. 180 minus theta, there we go, 180, we bounce back, theta is in the second. In the second quadrant, up here, sine is negative. Okay, so what happens here is that I'm reducing this to minus the sine of theta. I've earned myself a mark for doing that. Okay, 360 minus theta again. 360 bounds back theta, you're in the fourth. In the fourth quadrant, the cos diagram tells us cosine is positive. Okay, so this reduces to the cosine of theta. Now look at this one. This one has gone through a revolution and added on theta. So I'm in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, all ratios are positive, so that becomes positive the tan of the angle that I'm working with. So in this step, you get rid of all these 180s and 360s. Okay? Now look at this. Here we have a very weird angle. It looks like 180 minus theta, but it is not. Okay? So don't guess here, folks. The easiest way to deal with this and the quickest way is to use, again, your common sense. If you look at this, it's a positive theta which lies in the first quadrant, and then we reverse back. We go anti-clockwise, or clockwise rather, 180 degrees, which lands us in the third quadrant. Okay, so we've gone up theta, positive, and then we went in a, anti, in a clockwise direction, 180, hence the negative sign. Landing us in the third, where sign is, according to my cast diagram, tan is positive there, so sine will be minus the sine of theta. Now, folks, look at this poetry here. Again, we've got a situation of a little bit of algebra tells us those two things and their signs are the same, so they're going to cancel. And this here is my variation for my quotient identity. Look at that. The sine of theta is cos multiplied by tan. And that's what's left. Cos multiplied by tan will then give me 
the sine of theta. Okay, so there's my reduction formula applied to simplify this expression. Your instruction will be simplify, simplify the following. By applying your reduction formula, your cost diagram, and then particular identities if you need to apply them. Okay, let's look at the second and third or third and fourth question I've prepared for you. The third question has also got quite nice reduction rules in it. So I'm not going to go back to the first diagram, I'm just going to merely put my cast diagram down here and use common sense. Here, this is a fourth quadrant angle where cosine is positive. So the first bracket will have a cosine of theta in it. My next reduction and my third reduction would follow at the top. In the denominator I have two factors. Okay, so let's see what happens here. This here is 180 and I bounce on theta, so I'm in the third, tan is positive. So this is tan theta. Now again, look at that combination. Cos times tan, I'm immediately going to indicate is the sine of theta. Here we have an interesting situation. We don't have 360 minus, but we have theta minus 360. Now again, common sense. Theta goes up and then in the anti-clockwise and then the negative 360 means go 360 clockwise direction. So my terminal arm is exactly again in my first quadrant. I'll show you again. I go up theta and then I go in the opposite direction, 360. So I'm in the first, so this is the tan of theta. Okay, the third one is quite easy. It's 180 plus theta, which makes it a third quadrant angle. Sine in the third is negative, so it's minus sine theta. Here we have in our fourth quadrant, the negative angle e e indicates the negatively, indicates clockwise direction acute, so it is in the fourth way because it's positive and not tan. So I'm stuck here with minus the tan of theta. Now look at how beautiful this is. I've combined those two together. Okay? That gives me the sine of theta. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay? So I'm left with a sine of theta in the denominator, but look at what happens in the numerator. There's this tan and that tan that are the same, which are the same. Both of them, so they cancel out. So again, these two gave me the sine of theta. Here, a minus times a minus became a positive, so I ignored that sign. So I was left with this minus here. The tans cancelled, and sine over sine, sine of theta over sine of theta is still one. Nothing has changed. Okay, so folks, the quickest way to deal with this here is to make a mental diagram or a quick diagram for yourself where you locate the quadrant where these strange type of angles are lying. Let's look at my fourth example I've got here for you. Okay, again, remember our cast diagram over here, and we're going to interpret this. 180 minus theta puts us back in the second quadrant where sine is positive, so tan is negative. Okay, so I have an equal to the top there's two factors, the bottom there's one factor. And then I have these two things that are the two factors without a fraction. So here again, in the second quadrant, tan is negative. So this is minus the tan of x. Here I have 90 plus, so be careful. The 90 is going to change this ratio into its complementary ratio. So it's going to become the cosine of x. I just need to now locate the quadrant. Well, 90, I go 90 and I bounce x off 90 is in the second where sine is positive. So it becomes a positive here and sine because of the 90 becomes a cosine. 
Okay, your co-ratio, you're working with 90 degrees, you have to introduce your complementary ratio. Here, again, it's a situation of a clockwise direction, acute angle. In the fourth, sine is negative because cos is positive there. So this is minus the sine of theta. Okay, on the right hand side there's nothing I can, or on the, after the negative there's nothing I can do with the sine of y, but here I've got the same thing. It's another angle y, but it's gone 90 and I've come back y value, y degrees. So I'm in the first quadrant where cosine is a positive. Cosine, because of the 90 now, becomes the sine of the angle y. Remember, when you apply your reduction 90 plus or minus or 270 plus or minus, you apply a co-ratio. Okay, so what do I have here? I have on this side a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. Okay, now you can see, can you see what I've got here? I've got the combination of cosine that's multiplied with tan. And if I can remind us again, we saw that that's one of our combinations. I know that my tan of theta, let me put it in pink up here, so you can remind yourself. The tan of theta is sine of theta over cos theta. So that would mean the cos of theta times the tan of theta is the sine of theta. And there's that combination again. So that combination gives us the sine of theta. We've already taken care of those two signs. It's an x. I keep on changing here. Sorry, that's an x, folks. Just change it. And this is an x as well. So it is over the sine of x, and that is a 1. Here I have a minus times a positive, which is a negative. And on this side, I've got sine squared y. It's sine times sine is sine squared y. Now look at the beauty here. Here, this reduces to 1. Sine over sine is 1. Sine x over sine x. Minus the sine squared of y, and that's a variation of my square identity. I know that the cos squared of theta is 1 minus the sine squared of theta. Remember? Our square identity. So what is this? This is the cosine squared of the angle y. Now that was an interesting one. If I was you, I would watch it again. Try it by yourself. Watch it again and then see if you get exactly what I got as an answer. Our last question I want to look at is this question where again we've mixed up the ratios and we made them different. We work with a negative angle. We've got a fourth quadrant angle in there as well. Okay, so let's see how do I approach this. Now remember again, your little shopping list that you're looking for. Which quadrant am I in? What is the sign of the ratio in that quadrant? Apply your reduction. Be careful of vertical reductions and then any identities that follow after that. Okay, so let's see. This one again is measured clockwise in the fourth quadrant. Our cost diagram put it down here. In the fourth quadrant, our cost diagram is telling us that sine is negative. So the first bracket here reduces to minus the sine of theta because it's in the fourth quadrant. Plus cosine of 360 plus theta, so it is anti-clockwise 360. I add another theta, so I'm in the first quadrant where all ratios are positive so I have the cosine of theta over there. Here, I have a very interesting situation again. I go theta in a positive direction, and then I come back 90 degrees. I go theta minus 90 is a fourth quadrant angle. Cosine is indeed positive, so there's a plus here. But cosine, because of the 90, turns into the sine of theta, its complementary ratio. Now look again. You ask yourself, which quadrant am I in? I'm in the fourth, if I analyze that, the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. 
but because there's a 90, cosine has to turn into a sine. And then I have plus the cos of theta, which I really can't do anything with. So look at this now. Now I have minus sine theta plus cos. So if I write them the other way around, it might just be clearer to you. Positive cos minus sine. Multiply it by, and I'm deliberately going to write this as cos of theta plus sine of theta, and I can, because 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. If I add, it doesn't matter. Both of the, those things are just swapped. Now look at the form. A minus B, A plus B. Okay, the form is A minus B, A plus B, which I know is A squared, and in this case it's cosine squared theta minus the sine squared of theta. And with that, I really can't do anything more. So I think I've reduced this as far as possible. Okay, so remember now your little shopping list. The first thing you ask yourself is to locate the quadrant. Okay, once you've got that, what is the sign of the ratio in this quadrant? Is it positive or is it negative? Then you apply the reduction. Okay, you apply your reduction because of, of where the angle lies. Watch out for 90 and watch out for 270 because those cue in your co-ratios. And then fourthly, to simplify this, you apply your identities. Wow, I spelt it correct. Okay, folks, I hope that that helped you to see how your identities apply. We will, in our next video, look at what we do if we give you uh, the choice of the reduction formula. We don't give you the reduction formula. Okay, I hope that helped you.